Well, joining us now uh, is the author, Abby Longstaff. Welcome to you indeed. 90 years old, who'd have thought it? I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm someone who's quite shocked to find out he was 90 years old. I remember reading his books as a child. Why do you think he's managed to have such enduring appeal? I think as a children's author, you're always looking to appeal both to the child and the parent. And this book does exactly that. You can read it at almost any age. On the surface, it seems a simple story about a group of friends told very much from a child's point of view with very simple child problems. But underneath, there's a sort of depth to it. And I think that's what adults like about it. You know, people often quote it. They, you know, have little inspirational quote cards from it. And it does have that kind of depth of feeling and sentiment and heart that you don't always get in small children's books. It family. also has the advantage, I mean, it's set in sort of fictional Ashdown Forest, but it, it doesn't date, does it? I mean, That's this right. relationship between the characters, it, it, it could happen today. Yes, I mean, I think it's because it's so grounded in reality, it really is a, a child's problems. And you can imagine him playing with his toys and imagining that they're real. And each character is based on one of the little boy's to toys in yes. real life. That's right, yes. isn't it? And yes, yeah. and as we heard earlier, the characters are, are very, very well done. We can all imagine someone who's a bit like a Tigger and a bit like a Kango and everything. And I think that's part of it. But the new book is fantastic for that. It really brings together the old, original stories. Yeah, I was going to ask you if, you if you think it works. I think it's beautiful. Bringing in the Queen. I mean, obviously there is a commercial motive, as we, mm -hmm. we, we were saying there, yeah. but you, you, you think it's okay? Yeah, I think Who it's very funny. It's yeah. very funny. It sort of draws on a lot of little hints from the old books, and I think if you loved the books as a child, you'd, you'd recognise some of the things they talk about, like the North Pole, or mentioning going to see Buckingham Palace and changing the guard, and, and I think it, the book's quite clever to reference that, because, you know, it was written back in the, in the 1920s, and, and this new book has brought it all the way round to even even having Prince George in it. It's risky sometimes though, isn't it? Taking a classic and reworking it, sometimes you worry that maybe they should have just left it alone, it won't be as good. Yeah, I think it must be terrifying as an author to do it. I've never done it. You know, I think it's hard to take someone's work and write in their voice because everyone has their own voice and it must be hard for the illustrator as well. Well, indeed, because of course what the new book can't have is the famous illustrations yeah. by E.H. Shepherd, yeah. which were very much part of its success. Yes, but I think Mark's drawings do have that lightness of touch that E.H. Shepherd had in the new in the new book. And, and they are very beautiful. And there's some gorgeous scenes of London. It's lovely seeing them travel on the bus and see Big Ben in the background and things. And it's really beautifully done. And apparently the Queen as well, a fan of William <laughs> the Yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, who, who's written it, actually? The new one. Yeah. It's by someone called Jane Riordan, and it's illustrated by Mark Burgess. And Jane Riordan, what sort of books has she written? Other I don't than this know one? her. Do you know? I don't really know. I'm afraid. But a children's um, novel. Yes, I think she's a children's writer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where do you think uh, Winnie the Pooh, the House of Pooh Corner, the influence has gone? I mean, what would you sort of, if you drew the kind of family tree of uh, 20th century and 21st century children's writing, uh, very influential. Yes, I think it was one of the early books that really looked at things from a child's point of view. Um, and before that, children's books, they were often adults' books, just read to children, and they were very heavy with morals and things like fairy tales. Um, and Winnie the Pooh, and then later ones like Where the Wild Things Are and things, began, began to be more from that child-centric angle. And that was what was quite appealing about it for children. And did Winnie the Pooh influence yourself as a writer? Well, I write more sort of fairy tale and mythology based. I, I'm always drawn to the fantasy and, you know, there aren't any dragons flying around <laughs> in Winnie the Pooh. But well, I love the way the animals come to life and I think the character representation is fantastic. Who's but, your favourite character? We've seen most of them yeah. there on the screen now. I love, I love Tigger. He's always happy. He's bouncing around, always happy. It's, it's something <laughs> really yours. nice about that. I quite like Piglet. I don't know oh, why, but I think Piglet's quite sweet. Yeah. What about you, Adam? I think I quite like you. <laughs> <laughs> we chose a different one each. Yes, it's very that's good. good. <laughs> a range. All right. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you very much. Thank you.